What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm incredibly humbly honored Actually, I'm somewhat actually intimidated, which is very rare for me to speak like that uh, with my guest today. His name is Dr. Jerry Rivera DeHenio. I'm going to call him Dr. Jerry on the show. Jerry, it is an honor. You are an amazing human being. Thank you for coming on the podcast. How are you? I'm, I'm great, Jay, and thanks for having me on. And it, you know, your words are, are reciprocated back to you because, you. yeah, you're doing great work. Thank you so much. And, you know, I'll just, you know, give your bio a little bit right now. I, you know, your backstory, we'll talk about this in the podcast. Uh, for my listening audience, a person, a mutual friend of ours, um, you know, connected us and, you know, she's been telling me, Angela Black, shout outs to you. She's been telling me that this guy is at a total different level. And, you know, I hear that from a lot of people in the consciousness space and, you know, where we're at nowadays. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I take it with a grain of salt, but I watched his podcast today uh, with a guy from uh, Inside the Matrix, Kenny, I forget his last name, that they did on February 28th. And I was speechless. I don't even watch podcasts. I create massive amounts of content, prodigious amounts, and I don't even watch my own stuff. Right. But I watched yours today and I was completely sent off into the universe. And as I told you, you, you and I texted each other earlier today, or we spoke to via Angela. Um, my inner circle already knows who you are. And they were all, all day today going, holy shit, who is this guy? You know, I mean, I could show you some of the comments. I mean, they were even clipping some of the things you said. So anyway, all that said, dude, you are at a whole different level. Um, I'm going to get to your website and all the stuff and the energy, the, the Rasha technology that you've created for consciousness and stuff like that. But uh, you, you guys can find him at therasha.com. He also has bioregenesis. He has a lot of different things. I'll let him talk about those towards the end of the show. But uh, before we get going, why don't you just provide a little bit of your backstory um, so people can kind of understand, you know, how this evolved to like all this knowledge of the quantum realm that you have. Sure. And <laughs> thanks for that amazing intro, Jay. Yeah. So my whole sto- story started like when I was, you know, like four or five being visited literally by extraterrestrials in the hypnagogic state. So that state between waking and sleep, I was often visited. So Let's fast forward a few years later to when I was nine. Um, a lot of indigo children at that time experienced a lot of sexual abuse. I was uh, not uh, able to escape that. So I was uh, part of a, a really uh, egregious act that was done on, on several boys at an old boys school in New Jersey. 
Uh, and uh, yeah. And after that day or that year, Jay, I uh, turned to drugs because uh, as you can imagine at nine, you would think that, you know, your, your teacher that you would hold in high esteem and trust would not do the things that he did to us. Right. So I turned to drugs for all of my adult life and not just drugs. It was every single addiction you can imagine from gambling to sex, you name it. So I was doing everything to escape this, this physical vessel uh, until one day in uh, September of 10th of 2000, I went on a 24 hour drug bender of heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, ketamine, barbiturates, and liquor. Uh, and I was done. I mean, that, and that wasn't the only time I went on those benders just to say, but, uh, yeah, just one day on the rooftop of, uh, Brownstone in New York city, I, uh, did my last line of cocaine and I had a massive coronary heart attack and I died and, uh, came out of my body. So I had the whole outer body experience thing. And, you know, it was, it's, the thing is, you can still think, right? Everyone is afraid of death, but that's another thing that we're still conscious when we leave the body. And uh, that was fascinating in itself. So from that point, I was reintegrated with what I call the field, right? The, I call it the unified field. People can call it God. And in that space, I was reminded, I was able to access information, and uh, when I was resuscitated, I came back with a grip full of information. So, yeah. So how long, it, well, a couple of questions. Um, on that drug binge, was, mm -hmm. it, was the aim of you to finally leave this planet? Because obviously your soul was traumatized. You were, you know, obviously very damaged, right? On an etheric level. Um, was that the end game or was it just for you? Like just, you wanted to just get high to escape reality for you. No, I wanted to leave. So, you know, the, the consciousness at that time was just like, I'm done. You know, I just don't want to be here anymore, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, the plan was to leave. However, um, aspects of my higher self had other things to remind me. So yeah. And that was a, uh, like I share with everyone that asked me about this experience, um, I didn't want to come back, Jay. I, it was the most peaceful <laughs> experience, freeing experience, because we go back to our innate form, which is consciousness. So I didn't want to come back. <laughs> when you were in the field, you know, and I, I agree with you, you know, we were talking off air and I've done uh, 5-MeO DMT and I've had similar experiences being in that field of energy and frequency. I can do all um, meditations and take myself literally there. Now I'm not astrally leaving like uh, you did. I'm sure I do it, you know, in dream time at night. Uh, but, uh, you know, I can get there from the sound, obviously, you know, that vocal, um, you know, um, and then the focus and then dropping into the field. But uh, how long do you think you were in it? And I know obviously time is linear here in the third dimension, but um, from an aspect of your higher self, how long do you think you actually were dead before you were resuscitated? Well, I can tell you uh, to the minute because my friend at the time was feverishly trying to resuscitate wow. me. And he was like, you were, you weren't breathing. You were, your face was turning blue, no heartbeat for at least three and a half to four minutes. And it's an erroneous concept to think that, you know, people think after four minutes, you're, you know, the brain cells die, you cannot come back. That is completely untrue. I mean, there's, there, there's proof that we're able to come back hours after our physical body has expired. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, so did you actually have a, 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 you know, an EMT or anybody show up? you know, or did you just come back? Like you just were like snapped back in. And when yep. you were under, besides being in the field, did you, were you intervened by any other beings of, of higher dimensional uh, existence? So your belief system will dictate what you experience. Okay. So at the time I didn't have a belief system. So I didn't see Jesus. I didn't see Buddha. I didn't see any of that. I was literally, I bypassed that whole, let's say zone, sure. so to speak, that tunnel, Etc. Etc. And I went back up to a field where I was able to 
integrate with what I call a localized source consciousness field. That has no time whatsoever. So for me, it felt like literally an eternity. Sure. And that, but, and, go ahead, go ahead. No, that's, that's it. Okay, well, what I was going to say to that is that's what it felt like for me the first time that I did the 5-MeO DMT. It literally felt like it was 24 hours of deep, cathartic release, crying. I mean, saturating my clothes and just releasing. I mean, who knows how many lifetimes or incarnations of trauma I released in this moment. Um, now, again, I didn't, I was pretty, I was pretty low, man. I, I, you know, two months before that I attempted suicide, but uh, mm-hmm. I did not have such a traumatic experience as you, you know, with the sexual, um, you know, thing. And, you know, but truthfully, and you and I know this, I mean, all of us have probably have experienced that at various times and points and incarnations and lifetimes. So, Again, trauma to the soul, or, you know, as I like to call it, amputated spirit is kind of what we're all attempting as we live and, you know, raise our consciousness and all that. And we're going to get to that. that. That's ultimately the goal is to overcome the trauma. And, you know, both of us work with a lot of physicians and a lot of experts in the fields of science and medicine and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm always telling these folks that, like, you know, to overcome the diagnosis in allopathic medicine, you have to understand that everything starts on a soul level. And, you know, you can't get sick or cancer or this or that, any disease of aging, unless you have a traumatized spirit that doesn't get integrated, you know, through various mindful means and whatnot, or, or as you know, too, also the belief. Like you actually have to have an understanding and an awareness that you can go down that path because all these people who go down the allopathic medicine field thinking, my doctor will fix me, mm. you know, have no concept of really what's going on. And again, you know, in your podcast that you did with Kenny, you know, we are spirit inhabiting physical avatars, right? That's the experience. But at base essence, we are literally, as you call it, the higher self. And, you know, you talk about death in such a profound way, bro. I mean, I have such love for you when you speak it, but it really is a a change of expression. You know, it's a change of focus. You know, I always think of like Gandalf, you know, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, he says, oh, death is not the end. Mm. The next path, one which we must all take. You know, so it's, it's truly getting to the point, which you obviously were thrust into. Mm. Um, of recognizing that death is in the finite example of third dimensional living is nothing of what we've been taught or ingrained or through Abrahamic religious teachings or even Eastern religious teachings, anything like what it really is, correct? Absolutely. It literally is the most peaceful transition of consciousness from one form, physical atomic matter, to its innate original form, which is consciousness or energy. So, you know, I, and we're not taught, right? We're, we weren't taught to, to prepare for death, right? But, you know, the indigenous tribes, the ancient indigenous tribes, really, uh, they all prepared for the greatest journey that we're going to take in this incarnation, which is the transfer of consciousness experience or what people erroneously call death. Blowing. Religion teaches, you know, all religious teachings. Uh, I don't call, you know, I don't consider religious spiritual, truthfully, because man is man has hijacked it, you know, along with others. But yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about consciousness. Uh, this is your jam. This is my jam. I mean, you're a higher level than me, which you're right, you're upping my game today. Because remember, <laughs> no, but it's true, right? Like when you take two people again, this is the whole quantum experience, mm-hmm. uh, and we're both manifesting this highest and best outcome. We lift the vibration slash the consciousness, that cosmic awareness to all of us. So like to talk about consciousness, let me just give you my backstory real quick. Just two years ago, you know, I was the guy who wrote all these books on testosterone optimization and, you know, became this world renowned expert and blah, blah, blah. And then bro, I went to Peru and it was in 12 days in the sacred Valley with my wife and a couple other friends and dude, it literally molecularly altered me. Okay, now I was always walking the seeker's path and was into esoteric research like you. I have an encyclopedic memory of all the books I've read. That was another thing that I really loved about you. You know, we're talking to all these authors, Stitch in, Tellinger, all these people, all these guys that I was reading when people thought I was crazy. I'm sure you went through the same thing. And many of us 
have gone down that path. But dude, I went into the Sacred Valley. I saw all these monolithic, you know, architecture, stone edifices, all these things. And I was just like, what in the hell is going on? Now, I always knew we had been lied to, right? But now I'm like at this seismic, you know, goal of like reality is nothing like what they, again, they, you know, and you can tell who, tell us who they, you think they are, you know, have engineered it to be. And so I came back and I became this Jay Campbell Razor vibration guy, right? And now you talk about oscillation and I want to get to that. But when I came back, it was architect, re-engineer the brand. I don't give a shit if I piss off every single person who loves me or who follows me, you know, Jay's gone woo-woo, Jay's gone off the deep end, Jay's gone, you know, whatever. It didn't matter, Jerry, because literally I knew that the only thing that mattered was raising human consciousness, mm. was to connect with people like you, to connect with other people who understood this at this core, you know, base element that there is nothing else. There really is only unity and we can't get to unity until everybody, you know, moves beyond fear and beyond, mm. you know, courage. If I talk about the 200 line of integrity as Hawkins would disclaim it. And so again, watching you today and listening to Angela talk, talk about you, I was like, okay, this, we're going to make magic here today. And we're going to really emphasize to the world that this is what is ma what matters, that there's nothing else right? It's not making money and you know, materialism and all these things. It's raising human consciousness. And you are the guy to talk about it. So tell me, in your opinion, what you think about where we are right now. And obviously, this podcast is going to go live as soon as I can with my company. It's March 4th, Thursday. But where are we right now with this COVID nonsense, the vaccine nonsense? Are human beings still collectively working toward raising consciousness so we can get to that golden age or are we in fact stymied because of the fear that is gripping the world well that's a loaded question <laughs> so i mean we can go into a myriad of of directions on that um first uh let me say you and i are equal i am not higher than you I, you you know we are equals the only difference is it took a knucklehead like me to actually die to remember. That's the only difference. Right. And, and we, we wouldn't be here uh, if we didn't resonate at the same frequency sure. consciousness wise. And, um, you know, in terms of, let's just say, uh, where the world is at now, I mean, look, uh, from my perspective, there's a lot going on in terms of energy siphoning, energy vampiring. You know, the ultimate goal would be to for humanity to raise the collective consciousness. But there's been a misnomer or a disinformation that has been perpetuated through thousands of years. And it's that vibration versus oscillation okay so really consciousness as you move up into the higher dimensional planes the energy becomes less dense it becomes more energy expanding so in physics terms you have oscillation which is energy expansion energy projection and then you have contraction or vibration energy holding which means denser meaning right. the physical particles and atoms have to actually let's say magnetize in order to form let's say you know physical desks or matter so in my vernacular oscillation is the expansion of consciousness it's where you want to be right. versus vibration so the new age movement has erroneously put out there that high vibration is where you want to be well not necessarily you want to be higher oscillating in frequency versus higher vibration so that's really the main thing because 
if you're trying to have humanity raise its consciousness, you want to make sure that they're raising the oscillation rate of their consciousness versus raising the vibratory rate. And it's a very subtle difference, but it, it is the difference between taking your consciousness and breaking free from this prison planet versus getting your consciousness trapped and going down the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Beautiful. Now, if you're familiar with the works and teachings of Walter Russell, he has created Russellian science. Now, there is a guy now who's out there speaking on the Russell Foundation, and I'm a huge student of, of, of Dr. Russell. I mean, read all his books. A profound, profound guy. Um, but Matt, uh, and I forget his last name right now, I apologize. Uh, great, and also amazing guy. He says the exact same thing as you, that the whole raising your vibration in the new age consciousness it's confused because you're right, you know, as consciousness expands, we become lighter, less dense. We don't have that coalescence, as you said, through magnetism of, you know, the, 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 uh, the like you said, material form, right? Because there really is no matter, right? I mean, matter to coalesce, you know, to, you know, to give us this uh, density of like, you know, animate objects or in, excuse me, inanimate objects is, just so that we can actually experience life in the third dimension, because it's again, all imagined. And again, Russell talked about that. Obviously Hawkins talked about that. All the great thinkers um, of quantum mechanics or quantum entanglement or reality or whatever you want to call it, consciousness speak about that. So that's brilliant that you say that. Um, how would you tell a person who is understanding what we just talked about? And obviously, like you said, it's just a small, uh, break between vibration and oscillation. But how would you explain it to someone in the most simple lay fashion, the difference between oscillation and vibration? The in breath and the out breath, right? So when you breathe, you take a breath in and you exhale, you take a breath out. Well, the universe is expanding, they, they say. So that would be equivalent to oscillation or right consciousness expansion. And then at one point, everything is going to turn around and inhale or contract or vibrate. So it's, I, I bring it back to the breath, Jay, really. So, Okay, so I want to get back to your experience and how it goes into uh, base math, you know, um, because like you said in the podcast that you did with Kenny, you know, there are no, there's nobody talking about the creation force life of base math. You know, nobody's talking about that. They're all talking about death half of the wave, right? If we start talking about particle physics and wave mechanics, everybody's focused on the death half of the wave and not the creation force of the wave. But mm -hmm. this goes back to your experience, okay? So you came back, you were resuscitated. Mm -hmm. How long did it take for you to process this new being, this new man, this new consciousness that's inherited your physical avatar body to like wake up to the idea that like, what the fuck? going on how do i have all this profound knowledge and wisdom like how long did it take you to merge that or integrate that well first the consciousness that's in this body is comes from me it's parts of my higher collective it's not another being right but the sure. consciousness that was that experienced the sexual trauma that experienced the addictions the energetic possession that consciousness literally left this physical body, right? So higher, very small aspects of my higher levels of oscillation consciousness came down into this physical body. Now, how long did it take for this consciousness to assimilate the information? A long time, because it all boils down to was my, were the physical cells of my body, they were not able to accommodate the higher oscillating particles of my consciousness. So it took many, many years of me literally doing research, doing certain meditation techniques, doing certain DNA activation techniques to prepare my potential DNA or what science erroneously calls junk DNA, the introns in my, my cells I had to prepare them to receive the higher oscillating information. So that took many years, Jay. Beautiful. Yeah. So, um, but obviously, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, you had no spiritual beliefs slash awareness before this 
consciousness now it was downloaded into you and the you know the old traumatized consciousness left so what what did you gravitate to let's say in the first month of having this new consciousness you know um you know inside you like what led you down this path to start speaking out spiritual awareness or mindfulness or meditation or all of these like introspective techniques because this mm-hmm. is where i'm really find fascinating you know where does the source of guys like you and i who are truly seekers of the highest magnitude like where is it where do we think it's coming from well first when you experience when i experience my true nature of consciousness i literally experience love the frequency of love and truth, which is the all-knowing essence of the source consciousness field. So when I came back into this physical body, all I wanted to do was find out what traditions, what bodies of knowledge were perhaps sharing what I experienced. So when I went on, you know, many, many years of introspective research, I, you know, I studied uh, esoteric Gnosticism, shamanism, esoteric Kabbalah. I went to India, et cetera, et cetera. I studied, you know, medical Qigong for cancer. I mean, I went to every possible corners of this planet to see, oh, what, what, what is this information? Is it the same frequency that I experienced? So that was the the whole journey for, I would say, at least five or six years from 2000 to 2006. So, and even till this day, Jay, I'm still looking at things. I'm, I'm learning uh, what other, let's say, people or universities are teaching in terms of genetics and genomics. So I'm always out there to see, oh, okay, what did I experience and what, what, what are they teaching on planet? And it's very, very few and far between. Yeah, We're not teaching much. It's shrouded in secrecy. Mm. Um, if there is, you know, and, and again, that's why, I, again, I'm very privileged to have you to speak about this because there aren't a lot of people speaking about this, not in public settings. I'm sure there are enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you said, and I, and again, I appreciate you saying that, you know, cause you're right. We are all equal. It's remembering. So, you know, entrons, um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is the latent DNA circuits, which again, I'm a big student of um, the angelic realms, uh, also a Gnostic uh, you know, also um, very, very well read and researched uh, in understanding what I call doppelganger DNA, um, which again is like you said, we've been engineered to think that we have junk DNA. Give me a break. Source doesn't create junk, right? So in all reality, it's be de- detuned, re-engineered, de-engineered, whatever. You know, obviously the biblical text: Moses lived nine hundred years, Abraham. You know. So, I mean, there's very, very clearly the human matter being uh, in this third dimensional aspect of awareness has been engineered, right? We've been Mm. moved, they've done stuff to us, you know, again, I would say through the Project Looking Glass technologies, you know, they've traveled through time, they've gone advanced through time, they've created all sorts of different timeline, um, you know, eventualities and and, uh, outcomes. And we now in this moment, this now space are, you know, the representation of all of this DNA amalgamation and genetic engineering. You know, I mean, even there's CRISPR, you're familiar with CRISPR. I mean, you know, the technology is out there right now. It's very admitted. Um, and who knows how far it goes back. But I want to talk about Bates math, you know, uh, 12 and, you know, how you you know, got a hold of this, like, was this just part of your consciousness download? Obviously you studied, you spent five years, you know, becoming from that guy who was laying on the roof, just, you know, chasing a drug addicted high of death to this guy who now understands base 12 math. I mean, where, where did that come from? I mean, was that just part of the download or just more of you integrating and learning, seeking out higher awareness and knowledge? So, yeah. So all of this information came back in a zip file with me, right? you could Dropbox, which took many, many years for me to access. So the information was always there, Jay. It just took certain DNA level activations that were base 12 activations themselves in order for me or order for my introns to receive the information. Now, there are 
there, there are physicists and, and, and scientists and people a lot smarter than I am that have been talking about base 12 for decades, o- almost a century ago. Uh, I mean, in the, I think the 60s and 70s, there was a German physicist by the name of Burkhard Heim, H-E-I-M, that was talking about base 12 mathematics, 12 dimensions of uh, reality. And, you know, in my journeys, so to speak, in my consciousness, uh, direct experiential knowledge, I did in fact experience at least 12 to 15 dimensionals of reality. So, it, you know, I didn't, I started to look into really why were we taught base 10? It's because we're like, oh, one, two, three, you know? And then I started to research that pre-Diluvian or pre-flood uh, civilizations, civilizations were using a form of base 12, like base 60, for example, right? So, you know, uh, you know, it just started to make sense to me. And then as I started to, let's say, come more online, my DNA. So there's only two to three strands that code for protein, right? But source or God doesn't make mistakes. No. So we were originally meant to be a minimum 12 strand DNA beings. Yeah. So whatever happened to the other nine? Well, they were fragmented, right? In, in what science calls a junk DNA. And the, the idea is to morphogenetically reconnect those right. higher strands. Right. So if one DNA, say the first strand of DNA is equivalent to the first dimension, as you come online with your DNA strands, you have more access to the information, the mathematics to those higher dimensions. And base 12 mathematics is 144% the mathematics of those higher dimensions at D12 and, and beyond. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. Some of the books that I've read about the angelic frequencies, you know, they talk about, or the angelic realms, excuse me, they talk about the fall of consciousness talk about Atlantis, you know, and again, I know there's been many different epics or periods, you know, there was Lemuria, there was even probably Mu before that, and then there was Atlantis, there was probably many actually epics of Atlantis, because obviously there was a golden age, supposedly, Um, but they talk about the Atlanteans were the ones, and again, this is just from some of the works I've read, that deactivated the DNA, because the dark side the dark brotherhood, whatever you want to call them. There's so many names. Those who have held us back um, would have destroyed all conscious life in the universe if those other strands were not turned off or again, somehow deactivated so that they could, you know, pursue that energy and frequency of that awareness. Again, because like you said, when all 12 strands come on, you know everything, right? You are a being from source. And you are accessing the records, you know, some people call it the Akashic records, some people call it the Hall of Records, some people call it other things, but you have access to all of the energy and frequency and the nodes of information that is, you know, cosmically available, again, engineered as a being from source. So it's interesting that you talk about it in that way, but um, I, I have to agree with you. I mean, I don't think either of us, and maybe it's not important for us maybe to ever really truly have that awareness, maybe at some point we will, um, but that information, um, you know, again, as you call them, the entrons or doppelganger DNA has or was turned off or detuned, you know, for a specific reason. And again, I will liken it to from what I've read that, you know, in the fall of consciousness, it was done purposely so that those beings would not destroy all life in the universe or the known universes. Do you, do you think that that's, that's a possibility? That Atlantis was the reason why 
our DNA were was defragmented? Yes. Yes. Well, let's just say it, was, it happened way before that. Let's say 250,000, 250,000 years ago, um, minimum was when, you know, let's say off planet races such as the Jehovian Anunnaki came in and spliced their DNA with the primates that were on earth at the time. So Atlantis was just a, you know, it was the, almost the end result. We were actually the end result of their whole, their ex genetic hybridization experiment. But Atlantis was where we misused certain black hole technologies to try to harness the energies at the core of the planet, and we screwed it up. Yeah. If we're talking about this, that there's a high probability, Jay, that we were there. Right. Oh, I mean, I yeah. would be willing to wager my current life that yes, you and I yeah. were, we were probably actually involved in the engineering. Exactly. So, <laughs> so, 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 so scalar energy. You know, you talked about this in a way that I haven't actually heard very many people talk about this. Mm. Obviously, you're familiar with Tesla, and we are going to get to the Russia technology um, that's before the show's over. Um, but you were talking about the light body versus dark matter and how mm. souls slash higher selves, you know, again, energy and frequency of whatever we are as an etheric uh, being or an etheric awareness. It's almost like you said, it's a consciousness. Uh, the differentiation, can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Because I've never heard anyone explain it in the way that you did. Right. Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, they mistakenly, when they talk about spirit, they equate it to the soul, right? So they're really meshing both, but it's really not true. You know, when we're talking in terms of morphogenetic, quantum morphogenetic physics, which is the actual science that was, you know, the first creation mechanics of how the cosmos was created was based on quantum morphogenetic physics. And that has to do with, okay, when source, let's say, created manifest creation, this experiment, there was spirit, which is a form of consciousness. So there's the spirit, which is, let's say, pre-substance ether, okay? And then spirit births dark matter. Now, dark matter is the foundation of light and sound, because without dark matter, there is no light and sound. So there's a dark matter template to existence. Even our bodies, a, a, a planet, a galaxy, they have a dark matter template. That dark matter template creates our light body and our light body creates our physical body. So it really has to do with a how consciousness, Jay, steps down into materialization, how consciousness literally becomes a physical atomic atom. So dude, amazing. Um, my mind is going in so many directions. Um, so why does consciousness decide to step down? Like, what is the reason? <laughs> Why? I mean, obviously, we can theorize that we want to experience life in physical, the flesh. Mm. But why would consciousness at an okay. etheric, advanced, all-knowing, all-aware, not you know, level, why would it want to step down? Again, is this just part of the experience, as Walter Russell would say, the experience of the experience of being in a animated, uh, you know, physical material body? Well, we can just do a simple experience, experiential knowledge experiment, so to speak. If all your listeners right now close your eyes and you just, whatever room you're in, right? And just imagine you close your eyes and you see darkness, right? And you, you can't see your hands anymore or you, you're, you're anything around you. But just imagine in the room that you're in, you are an endless field of consciousness or energy. And that's all you know yourself to be an endless, infinite, all knowing field that has no boundaries of you. That's all you know yourself to be. So for infinity beyond, that's all you know yourself to be. One moment you decide 
And that comes from desire, a desire to know yourself more than this, this field of consciousness in this room. So source decided because it desired to know itself, to know more about itself, right? Oh, let me, let me, let me create an experiment. Let me create a little bubble of consciousness, a sphere, and I'm going to put my consciousness in that sphere. And it's going to downstep into many, many individual forms of consciousness. So I can experience myself in other forms of consciousness, not just physical. Let me see what I feel like as a galaxy, a cosmos, a star, a shooting star, an asteroid, you know? So it's really getting to know ourselves better. And that is the whole, let's say, intention of why an endless field of source consciousness would want to downstep itself into many, many, many individuated forms of itself. It's, again, it's the whole experience of the experience. You left off why it would downsize into a 17 and a half foot alpha draconian reptilian though, bro. There's a thing called free will. And there's a thing called the opposite expression of free will. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome, man. Uh, so, 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 so getting back to that, keeping in that frame of reference, um, scale or energy. Mm. Um, you know, I don't want to go too conspiratorial, but uh, it's, it's my belief, almost a, a knowing and awareness that, you know, the, whatever we call them, the secret space program dudes, the black operation projects, the group, you know, the Jehovian Anunnaki, I'm sure are supervising all of these guys. And, you know, obviously they've got their minions that are dark side minions, but I mean, they've been playing around with this technology, bro, since they blew up Maldek, Mm -hmm. right. Or whatever it was called, you know, correct. But a little little bit about scale or energy as it's defined in us, you know, How we can activate scale or energy. Look, these 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 collectives that are using scale or energy for nefarious purposes understood or understand, just like Tesla understood, that the primal substance that the, the cosmos is made up of is scalar energy. The problem is people mistakenly define scalar as just less than 1% of really if it's a, its effect because yeah. scalar energy think about this it's a perpetual fission fusion process it's a light sound electrical magnetic expansion contraction it's a little mini perpetual fission fusion generator that is what scalar energy is that is what we are right. Right. so when you can harness that Okay, when you can harness that knowledge, then you can either use it for the good of humanity or you can use it to control humanity. So unfortunately, I mean, there's very few people that have utilized scalar energy for the benefit of humanity, like, for example, Nikola Tesla. And many people don't know that he actually created healing devices that were based on scalar energy. He's only known for his free energy uh, work and his patents, but many people don't know that he actually worked with healing devices. He created not just healing, but communication devices, right? All based on scalar energy. And the thing is people want you, they teach you what scalar energy is not. They teach you what less than 1% of the effect of scalar energy. They don't teach you that we are scalar energy, that this field around us is scalar energy. Right. So. Beautiful. Um, you know, Wilhelm Reich, right? You know, he created those organ energy generators. Mm-hmm. You know, and then he was, again, you know, washed off or pushed off into oblivion. Um, you know, Byfield, Bur- 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 name, uh, Burfield Brown, you know, actually is the true guy who discovered the uh, unified field. You know, uh, Einstein was given credit, but he wasn't the guy. I mean, I, I mean, again, all throughout history, there have been people, and, you know, I would even consider you now at this point, like who have had a download 
through a near-death experience or through just, you know, uh, astral travel, um, whatever, where you were given this information. And again, obviously you have to earn it. You have to be ready for it. And as you did, you'd have to decode it further after you were given this amazing gift. Uh, and obviously even myself um, have gone through dark nights of the soul to get to this path, to get to this level where I have the ability to have this cause, this conscious awareness, because let's be honest, bro, you and I cannot have conversations with very many people in the way that you and I are talking about tonight. You know, they'll look at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right? <laughs> yeah. but it's a gift and a blessing to now have folks like you, you know, in my circle, you have others, I have others that we can talk about this stuff. But, you know, we've gotten to this point now, 2021, you know, mid-March, early March, uh, you know, people talk about the golden age. People talk about the age of Aquarius. People talk about we are coming back into the age of light and reason. Um, you have developed the Rasha, okay? Right? I want you to talk a little bit about that. I mean, I have not used it yet. Obviously, Michael Jaco and his lovely wife, Tracy, have used it. They, they go on and on about, oh, my God, you know. Uh, I, I Obviously, Angela's told me amazing things about it. But can you just talk about a what it is, B, how you invented it, and C, you know, its, it's impact, you know, from a big picture perspective of like how it can literally change the frequency of the collective. So when I went through my transfer of consciousness experience, I had a lot of time, I should have had a lot of toxins in my body, right? So drug toxins, that is. But when they tested me, Jay, twice, you know, blood and urine drug panels, there was no drug toxins. They were transmuted. Yeah, right. So, you know, the, the Rasha technology is simply, it's not even a technology, Jay. It's a consciousness coherence being or tool. And I didn't, you know, when I came back with the information, I wasn't a physicist. I didn't know anything about quantum physics, scale or energy. That was not in my wheelhouse, man. So, I you know, you know, there, there were, there are geniuses out there way, way, way smarter than me that, that, that created, you know, scalar devices, et cetera, et cetera. But when I came back with the blueprint of, oh, this is a consciousness coherence communication tool, the Rasha, which means dark matter template in the ancient Anohazi language is simply a consciousness communication tool. And how do we do that? We utilize the magnetic vector or side of a scalar energy field. Now, I didn't create this information or this, you know, I didn't do the research. Dr. Professor Constantine Mile from Germany, who you can all Google him, M-E-Y-L. He's the one that proved in countless amounts of published peer-reviewed papers that are intron DNA or what you say, the um, doppelganger DNA communicates, sends, transmits, and receives information through the magnetic portion. Why? Because in between the double helix, there is a, let's say, a, a ionic field of phosphates that hold a magnetic charge. It's called the major groove. So we don't, communicate on that level biophotonically or through light it's through magnetism of the scalar field so wouldn't you know that our brain is the most powerful scalar energy generator once it's in parasympathetic or hemisync state we are a walking organic scalar technology right right and we weren't taught this so let's expand on that. So when you're hemisynced, mm. what happens to the heart, right? So you talked about love in this podcast. We haven't talked enough about love. We're going to go deeper on love. So mm. what when you're hemisynced at a brain level, right? What mm -hmm. is actually happening at the heart, right? Because I've always considered the heart the greatest coherence capacitor, mm -hmm. right? So the heart has this amazing energy and frequency to send out uh, you know, forgiveness and empathy and compassion and kindness and courage and all these things. So, you know, again, this is an opinion question, but like what is happening to the heart when the brain is so balanced, as you call it, hemisync? Yep. You know, um, again, the great Walter Russell used to say that 
his words were rhythmic, balanced interchange. So perfection between all biosystems in a giving and receiving, right? Because again, the wave is continually going round and round, right? Again, it's giving and receiving until we get to balance. But what is happening to the heart when you have the hemisync in the brain? Well, see, when the brain is hemisynced, what happens is the whole entire chakra system, because it's really not the heart. The heart is stationed at the fourth heart chakra area. So it's really the chakra systems along with the heart, but the pineal, the coccyx. So the whole entire chakra system comes in to what I call a co-resonance of frequency, vibration, or oscillation, or love. The frequency of love is simply the co-resonance of frequency, vibration, oscillation. So that's what happens when your when you're left and right hemispheres sink in the brain, not just the heart. The heart is absolutely is paramount, but it's the chakra systems that are ones that are sending and receiving this frequency, co-resonancy uh, of love. Amazing. Yeah, my wife who Angela can tell you about is an amazing woman. I'm very, very blessed to have met her. She is my greatest spiritual mentor. You know, when we first met, I was nowhere where I am now on this path, but she, you know, told me that the real two primary reasons, a soul slash a spirit slash an etheric being inhabiting a physical avatar body is here is to give and to receive love. Right. I mean, that's what we're here to do. Smart woman. She's a real brilliant woman, but like the soul, if you think about it, right spirit, whatever, you know, whatever continues as at death, as a change of focus or expression, that's really what it holds, right? As it moves from incarnation to incarnation, from body to body to wherever it goes. I mean, that you really think about it, what can be, you know, ensnared in that DNA, you know, in that doppelganger or the entrance is the love, is the love that it received and the love that it generated, right? Because you know, it's like, it's my opinion, but I like to think that the more love you generate and the more love you receive. And again, it's kind of a, 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 re, a reciprocal thing, right? It's a mutual reciprocity. When you're giving it, you're going to receive more of it. Again, it's the whole quantum nature. Um, but wouldn't it make sense that every, the more you love in your lifetime, the next round or the next go round, the higher frequency that DNA or that spirit will, you know, take into the next round. And so it literally makes a lot of sense. There's been obviously, you know, great musicians who've written songs, love ballad, ballads and love poems or love songs about that idea. But do you think that that really does make sense that, you know, again, the more love you generate, you know, from a giving and receiving standpoint, the higher the awareness or the aspect of your existence in the next go round? I do, you know, and I, I, I break it down into several forms of love, right? So there's omni love, which is loving everything that is in your hologram as if it was you. So it's, it's, it's realizing that everyone around you, every animal, every plant, every person is a spark of you because we're all sparks of source consciousness, right? And then there's self-love, right? So all of this comes into play, but absolutely, it's the ability to send and receive self-love, omni-love, even tough love, right? right? And nurturing love. It's all one. Beautiful, man. Literally amazing. Um, okay, so talk about the Rasha a little bit more. So um, how can people use this? Like, you know, what, where are you right now? And I know you can't say maybe some things about it, right? Or, you know, you can be as ambiguous ambiguous as you need to be, but um, how can people like utilize this right now? I mean, again, and I have not used it, you know, for the sure. mind audience, but that will not be for much longer because I can <laughs> see me and you connecting very, very soon. Um, but like talk a little bit about like using it, um, right. you know, what the process is. Sure. So if you subscribe to the, let's say, knowing that consciousness is the foundation of not just healing, but life. If consciousness is the foundation of life, i.e. healing, then wouldn't you think you'd want to, let's say, 
get your consciousness in some type of consciousness coherence or unity with the whole entire cosmos. So that's what it really boils down to. And we utilize specific base 12 sound frequencies that are transmitted via the scalar energy field. So I literally, you know, figured out really what, what access is, because we don't really generate scale our energy. That's a misnomer. We, we actually access it. So, you know, we, this, this consciousness communication tool, what we call the Rasha simply utilizes base 12 sound frequencies along with the magnetic portion of a scalar field to communicate to what you call the doppelganger DNA or intron or what science calls junk DNA. So that's what it really boils down to. It's just affecting your consciousness, right? So if someone would have one of these devices in their home, which I can imagine, I will soon, uh, you know, what would be the process of like the recommended, how, how often would you, would this be something they did every time they did some sort of mindful training, you know, conscious introspection? Yeah. Um, meditation. I mean, is it, I mean, is it like, Again, I don't know, but I mean, is it just, do you use it once a day? I mean, can you use it whenever you want? I mean, like, you know, what are some best practices? So it really depends on the individual, Jay. If someone is, their in, their intention would be to become like a Tibetan monk in terms of meditation, you can do that too. How long or how many, we call them upgrades that would take. It all depends on the person's level of consciousness or level of stress as well. If someone were coming to us, um, let's say they wanted to uh, de-stress or feel younger, you know, that would also be something, or maybe better sleep or less pain. It all it all really boils down to that person's experience, and that would dictate, say, how many upgrades of the consciousness that would be, right? Because we're all about stress relief, relaxation, and consciousness coherence. Yeah. And again, um, and I've said this, you know, in papers and, you know, I've uh, publicly decried and, and, and battled, and I know you're not a social media guy and I'm about to not be a social media guy pretty soon myself, but, uh, you know, when people get to a level of knowing that, it is a traumatized spirit that causes disease, that causes inflammation, that causes all these issues that lead to physical body, you know, degradation at the cellular level. It would be a natural assumption that a device like the Rasha used regularly, again, and, I, and you're not making the claims, I'll just make one for you. If you have cancer, if you have a severe, you know, heart defect, if you have insert all these physical body ailments that using the device, and again, obviously you have to be at some level of conscious awareness where you are going to manifest that it's going to help you so that you can open that, you know, turn on those latent DNA, those entrons, the doppelganger DNA. I mean, bro, it, I mean, I see the applications for this is like off the chart. Absolutely. And you know, Let's just say a few years ago, we were visited by a certain three-letter agency. And that certain three-letter agency was a bit concerned about the Russia technology. And they were concerned about the technology, not because we were making claims, because we don't make claims. But if you are expanding someone's consciousness, then you're taking someone from a regular human being, and then you are shifting them into the meta category, the right. meta human being. And that was a problem for them, or that is a problem for them. Why? Because it goes against their, their right. agenda. So I asked them, well, innocently, what's the agenda? And the reply was, everyone has to, a certain population has to die from cancer, has to die from a heart attack. So it really has to do with the Agenda 21 or that depopulation right. thing. And you know what? Fair enough. But, you know, 
wouldn't that be amazing if humans were walking around at the meta human level? I mean, think about the possibilities, man. And unfortunately, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've brought this to the public sector because it could have stayed private, you know. But remember, I'm all about consciousness because that is it, that is it for me as you, right, Jay? So, you know, people are like, oh, Jerry, aren't you afraid that you're coming out? I'm talking about consciousness, man. I'm talking about literally the whether you want to reclaim your eternal life potentiality or you want to stay finite life and go down a black hole. Your choice. I'm not forcing anything. And I'm not making any claims about healing this, treatments that. It's all about upgrades of your consciousness. If you have if people have a problem with that, then we can address that as well. But you know, we're all about service to humanity versus service to self. Yeah, as as the great um, uh, cosmic, you know, um, esoteric researcher in uh, Australia, um, and, and I can't think of his name all of a sudden. Yeah, Angela got us on a podcast with him. I can't think of his name, but you know who he is. Uh, Max Egan, he says, serving creation, stepping in front of infinity without hesitation, serving creation. That's what guys like you and I do, and that's what we care about. It's not about money. It's not about this thing. It's about how we can do it. So I have so many other questions regarding that, but obviously it's not for the show because I don't want to get you or me in trouble, uh, but we can talk off air or via text or whatever. So before we end the show, though, I do want to talk about bioregenesis. I want to talk about some of the other things that you're involved in. You're creating these online schools and learning. You know, it, this is wisdom teaching to me. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, you know, so other people can find out more about how to go down these paths? Right. So everyone nowadays talks about biohacking, right? But, you know, they're really biohacking is really you're hacking the, a finite life body, a body that dies, right? So bioregenesis, think about bioregenesis as the eternal life biohacking, meaning that we're activating people's DNA through specific uh, base 12 techniques and technologies. And bioregenesis is our birthright. No one owns the the, let's say the rights, right? You know, you were talking about that earlier trademark rights and this and that. That's all bullshit, man. I mean, that is that when someone hits you with like copyright infringements, man, right. that's just telling me that these people want to manipulate the knowledge, right? And the, the knowledge belongs to the cosmos. It's our birthright. So bioregenesis, I've started this university, so to speak, called Bioregenesis University. And it is really the only eternal life-based principled self-educational alliance or system that shows people, hey, there's finite life information, there's base 10 mathematics and technologies. Oh, and by the way, here's another option, base 12 mathematics, base 10, uh, base 12 uh, uh, technologies, base 12 principles. So, and it really is that simple. You do either want to, and I hated school. I didn't like school, Jay. I, I mean, I wasn't, and the reason why I didn't really like school is because, and it's not a knock because I'm even myself finishing an online genetics and genomics program at Stanford. Why? Because I wanted to see what they were teaching about human DNA. If I, they knew anything about alien DNA, that's the only reason. I couldn't really care less. And I'll probably get thrown out for, for saying that, but I don't care. The thing is, and people can, don't shoot the messenger, the educational system, the monetary system, that is all based on the Anunnaki influenced system. Yeah. Okay, so if, if you have a doctorate, PhD, like my parents, their MDs, they got their MD from a, a, a so-called Anunnaki-based system. That's cool. That's great. All I'm offering is, hey, there's an eternal life way of self-education. We're not teaching people how, like what to think. Oh, you got to do this. We're teaching people direct experiential knowledge or direct cognition. And that's it. If you, if you resonate with what I just shared, look us up. If, you, if you're there throwing energetic daggers that, you know, you're not a real PhD level program, fine. You yeah. can go, you know, really. So, 
you know, it's just about sharing what I've experienced, Jay. Everyone should be able to tap into cellular memory. Everyone should be able to know who they are, where they came from, to know what their purpose is. But more importantly, and this is the more important thing, is where are you going once you leave this physical body? Do you even know? Right? And most people do not. And they're scared shitless of the idea of that. Correct. So, you know what? More power to you. If you want to, you know, this is what I do. What I say to all the, the naysayers that you and that we, that we have to deal with Jay is like, you know what, you know what, stay in your own lane. You, if you don't like what Jay's talking about, you don't like I'm talking about, Hey man, we're not forcing this down. You can go do whatever you want to do. Right. We will attract those with a certain level of DNA level of activation in their DNA coding. And that's it. We'll do our own thing. Everyone else can do theirs. Dude, this show has been so profound. I could talk to you for days. Um, bonus question, but back to what you just said. Free will and intention, man. You got yours. Go do what do what thou wilt, right? The famous <laughs> Alistair Crowley statement. Um, just a bonus question. Jehovian Anunnaki. Um, you're probably familiar with the Wingmakers and um, you know, some of that information that's out there. You know, you talk about Stanford, but um, how do we it is a bonus question. And I know it's out there, but like, how do we differentiate the hierarchical systems of the Anunnaki and the Alpha Draconian reptilians? Like, are they just like henchmen of the Anunnaki? I know it's an opinion question. It's out there, but it's a bonus question because you obviously have really done your work and studied this kind of stuff. Like, what do you think? Well, first of all, just like the human race has many, many iterations or race lines, right? The Anunnaki have the same. You have Palladian Anunnaki, you have Jehovian, you have Jehovian Niburian Anunnaki, you have Draconian slash Anunnaki hybrids. So right. there's many, many forms of the Anunnaki, right. Right? right? And then you have the Drax, you have the Reptilians, yeah. they're all different race lines. Yeah. Now, think about what's happening on planet and you can just understand it better. Look at all the different races, governments that are vying for positioning, yeah. right? Manipulation on planet. So we are just, we are just the physical outpicturing or expression of what's going on at the higher right. dimensions, unfortunately, or fortunately. And the thing with the Anunnaki and why, why is this the whole, you're hearing Anunnaki this, Anunnaki that, but why the Anunnaki? It's because they were created to become the Avengers of the human race. They were actually created to take us out. That is the whole end game of the Anunnaki. And look, I know there's Anunnaki out there that are for humanity. There are. Totally. Totally. Okay. I'm not just poo-pooing the whole entire Anunnaki race. Totally. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Uh, brother, man, I have so much love in my heart for you. This is the beginning of something amazing. I know you and I are going to work together in who knows how many different ways. Uh, it was a total blessing to have you on the show. This podcast is going to help a lot of people. It's going to resonate at a very, very high oscillatory rate for numerous people that are blessed and abundant to be able to watch this. If someone right now wants to connect with you further, which are going to be a lot of people after the show runs. Mm. Uh, what is the best way for them to do that? Our website, just drop it, you know, drop us an email at uh, the T H E Rasha R A S H A dot com. The Rasha dot com. Send us a, a, an email and uh, we can go from there. Beautiful, man. I, again, dude, I have so much love in my heart for you. Phenomenal show, tremendous awareness. You are serving humanity at your highest and best. And it's an honor to be able to roll with you and to be able to talk to you. And again, man, at my heart. So for all of you amazing folks that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, of course, support the amazing individuals that come on. Dr. Jerry is one of the most amazing people, if not the most amazing person I've ever, ever interviewed on the show. Go to his website, the T-H-E Rasha.com. Find out more about the technology find out more about the online classes that he's teaching. I know I'm going to get involved and again, support him and go to him. And remember, 
raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.